everyone and welcome to the kitchen at Tisa's house. Uh, my name is Jada and I am actually introducing myself for the first time to you here. I am the new business development manager here at Tisa's estate and uh, today I thought I would introduce myself to you by doing something that I absolutely love doing which is baking. And since we have a countdown to Christmas going, I thought I would bring you a traditional Italian recipe uh, for some biscuits, but with a little Christmas twist on it. So I've taken the traditional recipe for cantucci, which is a dry biscuit that is typical of the region of Tuscany. And I have added some Christmassy ingredients, um, for example, some cranberries and some cinnamon to just spice it up and make it a little bit more Christmassy. So these are the ingredients that we're going to be using today. Um, so starting from the top, we've got two lovely organic eggs from our organic farm. We have uh, 50 grams of cranberries, 50 grams of almonds, which are already roasted and chopped, 50 grams of dark chocolate or whatever type of chocolate you prefer, um, again roughly chopped. Uh, two large teaspoons of cinnamon. I used sweet cinnamon, but you can use whatever cinnamon you prefer. 125 grams of granulated sugar, 8 grams of baking powder, 250 grams of plain flour, the zest from two oranges, just a pinch of salt, and 60 grams of butter, which I have already melted. So a couple of tips before we actually start the recipe. Uh, tip number one is get your oven preheated at 180 degrees. Um, I would suggest a static oven. Um, just to make sure that the oven is really nice and hot before the biscuits go in for the bake. And uh, tip number two would be to get your almonds toasted and your butter melted as a first step to make sure that they've cooled enough before they go into the recipe. So um, to start your recipe, grab a large bowl and we're going to start by adding the eggs. Then to your eggs, you're going to add your sugar and with the help of a whisk, you're going to try and smooth it together. I like to add my sugar a little bit at a time to make sure I don't make mess and it's all nicely combined. Next, we are going to add our butter to the mixture. Uh, now remember what I said at the beginning uh, about making sure that the butter isn't too warm uh, because it's going to affect the dough mixture of the biscuits. So incorporate your butter into your egg and sugar mixture. Make sure there's no lumps and it's all combined nicely. You've added your butter to the mixture. You just need to add a little pinch of salt. I just generally do it by eye. Um, and most importantly, your orange zest. This is when the mixture is going to start to smell quite Christmassy. Combine it all nicely, make sure the orange zest is spread around the entire mixture. Next, we are going to add our spices, so in this case some cinnamon. So pop your cinnamon into the mixture and again make sure it's nicely combined through. And once we've got our cinnamon combined we can start adding our toppings. So in this case I have chosen almonds, cranberry and dark chocolate um, to really create that Christmassy taste in your mouth. However, um, you can swap these ingredients around if you prefer other types of nuts like hazelnuts and pistachios, you can use those as well. Um, if you'd rather skip the cranberries, just double your dosage of nuts and you can use whatever chocolate you prefer. I just prefer dark chocolate in general. So we're gonna add the cranberries. And again, I like to mix through my ingredients after adding each ingredient, just to make sure I don't have any lumps. That's the almonds gone in. And if I can remind you again, you need to 
toast your almonds lightly before you chop them because that really creates a strong nutty flavour in, in the nuts before you add them. And a dark chocolate at the end. Again, make sure it's all nice and combined. And you will find that at this stage, the mixture will start to become quite tricky to mix with your whisk. That's totally normal it's because you have a high content of actual ingredients and less egg mixture. So once you've got your mixture ready, it's time to add the dye ingredients. So we'll add the flour and the baking powder. Um, we will sieve them through to make sure there's no lumps in the flour and in the uh, baking powder before adding them to the mixture. What I do is I just simply dip my baking powder into the flour mixture so I don't have to sieve them through separately. And I will slowly, a bit at a time, sieve them through the mixture. If you have a bigger sieve, I would suggest you use that. I suggest you take a little break from adding the flour and start mixing the flour into the egg mixture. Using a wooden spoon. Uh, at this point, I would no longer use a whisk because the mixture is too stiff. I'll scrape the bottom and the sides of the bowl with the wooden spoon to make sure you're catching all of the flour. At this point, your mixture should be still quite sticky. As we work it, it will stiffen. Um, and we will also add a little bit of extra flour for the shaping. So don't worry too much about it. So combine through all of the flour. And then what you want to do is for a couple of minutes, you just want to work your mixture with your wooden spoon um, to just make it the right consistency and prepare it for the shaping. So once you've got your mixture worked, um, you want to divide it into four portions. Um, the four portions should be enough for, with the amount of ingredients that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, using some extra flowers on your hands and a floured surface, you want to take each quarter and you want to roll it into a log shape. Um, the logs can be quite short and stumpy because we still want the width of the biscuit to stay fairly large and you want to make sure that you're not squishing your logs but rather rolling them gently because they will actually um, rise up when baking. So repeat the procedure for all four of your logs. Once you've got the biscuits shaped, we want to place them in onto a baking tray because they're going into for the first bake. Um, line your baking tray with some baking paper to ensure they're not sticking and either using a spatula, if you're clever, or your hands like I'm trying to do, move them to the baking tray. Placing them on the baking tray, you want to be careful that they are not too close to each other because they will expand as they bake because we've added baking powder and they will touch and merge if they don't have enough space to rise. And once we've got them on our baking tray, we're now going to put them into the oven for the first bake for 20 minutes at 180 degrees. So once your logs come out of the oven from their first bake, you need to prepare them for their second bake. So um, these types of biscuits in Italian are actually called biscotti, which actually means twice cooked, which is why they need a second bake to get a very friable hard biscuit. Um, so you want to get your logs and cut them with a serrated knife diagonally into one and a half to two centimeter slices. Um, and they will be a little bit friable, um, which is totally fine. You can use the off cuts for a little snack. Once you've got your slices, you want to lay them all on the same side, um, like so. And you want to place them back in the oven and cook them five minutes on one side, roll them over to the other side and cook them five minutes on the other side. And that is your biscuits done. 
and these are your Christmas cantucci finished. Um, as you can see, they're quite a hard fryable biscuits and um, traditionally in Italy we dip them in sweet wine called Vin Santo, uh, but they're just as nicely enjoyed in a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or a nice cup of hot chocolate for the winter time. And uh, if you'd like as well, you can um, create some toppings for them. So you could do a chocolate dribble on top if you wanted, or before the first bake, you could put an egg wash on top. It just makes the top nice and glossy um, and just a bit darker. So I thank you very much. That's everything for me and everything from the kitchen at Tisi's house. Um, one last thing before I leave you is that um, it would be great whilst you wait for your bake to be ready to have a little browse on our Facebook page. Um, for this Christmas we have some amazing handmade wreaths um, available to purchase so have a little look around and put your order in and uh, keep your eyes on the Facebook page and on our social media for any upcoming events and we're very much looking forward to welcoming you back at TCS in 2021.